here's what we're gonna start off with. You know, let me restart the video. We'll start it again. 34 p.m. Okay. So, addressing haters. I've said some fucked up shit in the past. I'm not a perfect person, nor do I ever expect myself or anyone else to be. I will continue to make mistakes since that is the only way to learn and grow. So let's acknowledge my public mistakes, right? The things that are out there. And let's just be like very, uh, let's just be very, very blunt about it. Because we had this conversation with Rory. It's like, you know, he was like, you know, uh, what's it called? You probably don't like some of the things that you did in the past. But see, here's the deal. One of the greatest ways to deal with this is acknowledge what you did in the past. You don't have to hate it. Just acknowledge and just be like, yeah, I did that. That's a sign of maturity, in my opinion, at least. I've said the n-word with a hard R in stream. Not in league chat, but out loud on mic. And you can find this video because I don't think it's ever going to be taken down anytime soon. And I think somebody's just going to re-upload it anyway. You know, if I if we're going to talk about all the things that I've done wrong, well, might as well expose it, right? So yes, uh, is very. Uh, you have to remember that I lived a portion of my life in Philly. I also played a lot of Call of Duty growing up. So me saying the n-word with a hard R is not justified in any way, but why I said it matters. I didn't have good control over my emotions and said something that I shouldn't have. So there you go. I allowed, uh, here's another thing, right? Um, in May of 2018, I allowed myself to be vulnerable to letting some random person add me on Discord to have a conversation about a controversial topic about uh, grape, the fruit, and abortion. I allowed myself to be dragged into a shouting contest where the conversation was charged and not calm and rational. It allowed me to being prone and vulnerable to social manipulation techniques that allowed the perpetrator to bait me into saying things you normally wouldn't say without stress, duress, etc. Again, people can bait you into saying things. You have to be very careful about that. I allowed myself to be susceptible to that, and that's my fault. Um, and also, there were things that I didn't know at the time. When I was, uh, at the time, I was uh, 18 in that video. So, again, by this May of 2024, well, I've been six years since then. So, I lived an extra 33% of my life. Um, and another thing, you have to remember that most people that preach for these social injustices are not the people being affected. Okay? This is just a way for them to punch down and make them feel better about themselves. They want to have a social superiority complex where they feel like they're saving someone or that they are completely innocent people and that other people are racist, sexist, etc. When in actuality, anyone can be racist, sexist, etc. Okay? So, the easiest form of this was when the whole Black Lives Matter thing was going on and then they started making an Asian Lives Matter thing. I've had a lot of people contact me about that. And I've always told them this, I don't give a damn about Asian lives matter. I don't think Asian lives matter more than anybody else. And I think the cause in itself is stupid and I don't support it as because again, your, your only qualification markers is that is your race. So since I am the, of the Asian race, I'll give him my two cents. I think it's stupid. Like, I don't believe in preaching for all lives matter, black lives matter, Asian lives matter. I don't give a shit about all that. Everybody's lives matter. That's it. Point blank and simple. End of sentence. Like, th th it does not matter that during COVID-19 that Asian people were highly discriminated against leading to the highest rise in Asian Americans purchasing firearms in America. Okay. I just think that, again, that, that does not mean that we need to start a movement calling Asian lives matter. Like, yes, there are plenty of videos of people doing violent things to Asian people. Yes, I get that. But we're forgetting that other groups of people exist as well. Like, hate and racism and all that other stuff is not limited to one group or one sect of people. We should just stop all of it. But nobody wants to talk about it like that. Because people want to use it as like some social justice thing that they're going to get behind and be like, Oh, look, I'm a part of this organization. I support you. Shut up. Anyway, uh... If you're someone who frequently watches my stream, you know, understand that I've got people who spend their time and day texting me in a Discord all day long because they have nothing else better to do with their time, okay? They make videos of me constantly, and it's real. Their Discord has about 50 plus members. There's only, uh, that's the only one that they've made public that I know of. There's probably more, but I don't care. 
Uh, just for the sake of this video, we're just talking about this because, again, it's real. You can look it up. Uh, there are plenty more from what I understand, and I don't have time to care about it. Uh, the point is, is that they will try and contact you via whispers on Twitch or other means. If you have Instagram, Facebook, etc., uh, and send you links showing you videos of my past, just a fair warning to all of you that watch my stream frequently. Uh, that's what people do when they're trying to dock. So I don't know if uh, Cho's gotten any, but I know Nibba has gotten some before, and I know a Not lot really. of other people. Oh, what's up? Oh, I never gotten any. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, one of the uh, newer viewers told me and uh, that they got a uh, they got randomly added and uh, sent a message of my Reddit or, or the Reddit post involving me, not my Reddit post because I don't use Reddit. Um, what's it called? And so yeah, you're just just a fair warning to you guys. But I think I'll put it to you this way. So this is as I continue with this video. Um, this works well for me. So this is pretty much screened out all the people I don't need as my customers, my clients, my viewers, right? If anything, this works as free advertising. It gets me more viewers because I get plenty of DMs of people asking me or inquiring me about those links sent. That's why my viewership is skyrocketed. So I'm just addressing that here. Uh, and I mentioned this earlier because, again, I did this live earlier today. So I'm giving you guys this video after having had this conversation with a whole bunch of people. Uh, I'll put it to you this way. There's a reason why Donald Trump... Oh, thanks for following uh, Sarku. Yeah, we're getting a lot more followers now because of my YouTube stuff, which I will address in this video too. Because we've already surpassed 200,000 views, by the way. But anyway, um, let's see. Uh, let's see how we're going to do this. So, yeah. Donald Trump won the 2016 election because nobody would stop talking about him. So if people are still talking about me, whether it's good or bad, they're still talking about me. And you know the best form of advertisement is by word of mouth. It costs you nothing, and all you have to do is just keep doing your normal thing. Meanwhile, people pay hundreds of dollars to advertise on Google ads or Facebook ads. I have to spend zero dollars to get these people to talk about me. You know what I have to do? Turn on my camera and talk. Just so you know, Donald Trump in 2016 got over $12 billion in free ad rev, in free ad talk. He was one of the most talked about politicians on the news 24-7. Okay? So, if people are talking about me for good or for worse, it may not look great, but it gets views. And it gets attraction, it gets, ten, uh, you know, it gets a lot of people to come hang out. And, you know, more often than not, I get more people that see the bad content and then come by and figure out if I'm actually a bad person or not. And once they figure out that this is all just a sham, they stay and become long-term lurkers. So, yeah. even though, And for the record, I will state, I think doing that kind of activity, I'm against people that make that kind of content about me. Like, where they're just making videos just to make me look like to be a, a terrible human being or whatever they see in their eyes. I'm up against, I'm against that. Yeah, any eyes on me are better than no eyes. Because here's the deal, right? It's it's one or the other. Either I'm a terrible human being or, you know, Willy Ren's not so bad. Those are the two dichotomies you have right there. So, you can trick, these people are going to trick you into thinking that I'm a terrible person. But the longer you stay and watch my stream, the more you're going to see for yourself. I don't need to tell you that I'm a good person. You'll figure that out yourself. That's it. So if you're coming here based off some Reddit post of something that I said six years ago, okay, cool. Regardless, either you're gonna you're gonna stay or you're gonna go. That's it. It doesn't it does not matter either way. Because again, you have to decide how you're gonna spend your time and your attention. And if my stream's the place that you want to spend your time and your attention, we welcome it full arms we have a nice community here of people it's like building my own zombie survival shelter and we have all these survivors cho here is one of the uh one of the hunters he go gets out he gets a lot of meat he brings back a lot of duck <laughs> i feel it's important to talk about this because i feel like other people will have to deal with this in the future at some point because that's just how the world works 
I just got done doing my week-long therapy session of listening to always look at the bright side of life while playing League of Legends from Iron to Diamond while trying to remain calm, having played over 200 games. Uh, when typically I'd slam my keyboard or slam my mouse, you'll see some videos of this online from our, uh, our favorite fans. Uh, I had to get comfortable with myself and address the things I didn't want to associate with myself. A Navy comes in while I was live recording this at about 11.03 a.m. I appreciate the taking accountability, but if nobody was truly affected by what you said, I don't see the problem. Everyone gets angry and say the words, uh, say the worst word that comes to mind sometimes. And, and Navy, I appreciate you stopping by to my stream to tell me this in the comment section. Uh, remember that taking accountability has to come from the frame of mind that you are comfortable with your actions that you took, okay? The mistakes you made, okay? If you try to do it because you want to save your fan base, then that's a shaky way to approach it. That's in my personal opinion, right? So as I break this down even further, I am taking accountability to be comfortable with myself, okay? The fact of the matter is, is that we all make mistakes, big or small. What matters is whether we allow those to make the mistakes to define us or do we choose to use it for growth, right? In my opinion, I appreciate apologies that come from changed action, okay? I don't care how many times someone tells me that they're sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If they keep repeating the thing that makes me upset, their apology is worthless. A true apology, in my humble opinion, is change behavior. That's why I cringe when like another A-list superstar has to come make a public apology for saying something because of cancel culture. It just doesn't seem genuine or authentic. It just comes off as, I'm just trying to save face, right? This is why I've never and probably will never apologize in that way ever. It's too cringy and I don't want to be remembered for that. And Navy said, if nobody is truly affected by what I said, then I agree. There isn't a problem. Because here's the deal. Why am I going to apologize to people for saying the N-word with the hard R if people don't know that I've said it? Who am I apologizing to? People that are never going to be offended? Same thing with the R victim video. That's from six years ago. Who's still watching that video? If you are, then you're probably stuck in the past anyway, and that's not my problem. But to every other normal human being that hangs out on my stream, like, I don't owe you an apology for something that I didn't offend you over. And if you are offended by something that happened six years ago, well, here's the key. That was six years ago. Are you going to bother to check in on who I am today? If the answer to that is no, then I'm probably not going to be spending time with you anyway. And it's probably better that you just click off my stream and pretend that you never saw me on the internet ever again. Because again, at that point, you are voluntarily choosing to allow me to remain in your headspace and live rent-free in your head. So, save you the time, just purge me out of your memory. And then pretend I didn't even exist and go on your merry way. You know why I can say that? Because I play thousands of League of Legends games, and you know how many people I remember? Zero. I play COD with Cho all the time. There's like hundreds of people we come across in a night. Because there are like 12 people, right? Two of us are Cho and me, and 10 people are like other random people. We'll play like 10 or 15 games in a night. Do I remember all of them? No. Sometimes there'll be a name that comes up every uh, so often and we'll remember, oh yeah, that guy, because he was in our prior game. But other than that, we don't remember these people. Cho, do you remember the last guy you played with in COD? No. It's the whole point. Maybe Same just thing the with clan of the, the titty clan. We call oh yeah, the titty clan, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's all that's the, 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 the period Y period, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that one, even though, even though I fell asleep while we were playing. Uh, <laughs> You know, I was so tired when we were playing that I, like, sat in, like, a corner and, like, tried to, like, snipe out of, like, my sleepy eye. <laughs> I was like, dude, I was like, I don't, I want to try to keep playing, but I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, I was so dead. Ugh. Uh, is there anything else I want to say here? No, I think that's addressing that. We had a couple interesting topics. Uh, scared of feeling too comfortable. Yeah, we have a lot of... So, for the, I guess this is a little self-advertisement. If you guys want to come talk to me about any topic, please stop by. Because I love talking about everything. Like, understand that I'm passionate about a lot of stuff. Uh, firearms. Okay, guns. Uh, uh, 
guess. <clears throat> Damn, where's all my goals? Oh, it's not here. Oh, it's in my other document, I think. That's okay. But, anyway. Um, I guess that's all I have for talking about haters. We had a wonderful conversation where, like, this guy made another account called... I think Willy Fan or whatever. Let's see. Ah, here. You know what? We can talk about a couple of this stuff. Okay, scared of feeling too comfortable. So one of my viewers asked, like, you know... Am I afraid of getting too comfortable? And I think that's a good quote from My Hero Academia from Endeavor that basically says that, you know, when he was uh, doing the hero internship for the uh, the three three of the main characters, show me that you can surpass your, uh, your past selves. Maintaining the status quo is synonymous with going backwards. A hero is constantly accelerating. So for me, it's like, you know, um, even though my life will go back to nothing, I still like the idea of spending my time anyway. Since I have to spend my time, right, I might as well spend it doing something that I find meaning in. So that's where all the activities that I do or the things that I subscribe to, that's where they come from, okay? I would like to improve at the things that I'm doing, right? Since there will definitely be more people that come after me in the future, I want to leave behind a legacy and it come after me in the sense that, like, you know, more people will be born, more babies will be born, like, you know, I'm going to die, I'm going to go to dust, and there are going to be, like, billions of other people that are going to be walking on this planet. Okay, uh, and so, you know, I want to leave a legacy of life lessons behind to help them along in their life journey, their personal life journey. I don't need carbon copies of me. I don't need multiple clones of me. I'm going to live my life and then I'm going to die. Everybody else has their own individual life that they have to live and their own journeys of discovery and whatever it is that they want to do. All I want to do is take everything that I've learned, distill it down to lessons and give it to people so that they can get at least get a head start. Like, imagine when you're starting to play a game, right? And then imagine if somebody popped out of the sky and was just like, Hey, if you're playing Armored Core, let me give you some tips and tricks so you can have more fun. Imagine that. Or you first started playing Genshin and somebody's like, Hey, you want to hear some cool tricks? Look at these settings. They'll make your game better. So that's basically what I want to do. Not because I'm like here to tell you how you should live your life. Just be like, Look, dude, I did some stupid shit. Don't do what I did. So I want to have been a person who found goals and worked at the best, uh, worked to the best of his abilities towards accomplishing those goals, since those goals will help not only myself, but uh, others around me, now and into the future for future generations. That is something I find worth living for. Don't be afraid of your past. Okay, that's for me personally. That's my own personal note. You guys do whatever you want. Embarrassing stuff you did or past mistakes can be tough to overcome. Sometimes it can take you years before you fully recover. I had to go through this period. But now that I'm 24 years old and I've already been through some of the worst stuff, I finally came out the other end. I now have the full confidence in knowing that I will never be perfect and that I, that doesn't mean I can't work towards perfection. I know that I will always make mistakes. However, I will try my best to not make mistakes that end up causing other people trouble. If I do make a mistake, I'll take action first, doing things without asking for permission, and asking for forgiveness if I did do something wrong. A small note on apologies, you do not owe the world an apology for living, okay? And living means you will always make mistakes. You do owe an apology to the single person you offended, not to the people who will never give a damn about you and just want to see you suffer for their own personal fucked up mental since they have some sort of mental condition that they don't want you to ca that uh that you don't i don't want you to catch or develop okay the easiest way for you to get through this is to really talk about it out loud to yourself or write it out for example what's the worst that could happen i said the n-word with the hard r on live stream right back when i was a lot younger in my old room with my bunk bed so the video is extremely dated but what's so bad about this is saying the N-word with the hard R okay? In January 2024, this is not okay if you live in America. I'm self-aware enough to remember all the hate and vitriol I'd get from the uh, grape incident, okay? I'm always thinking about how people would react. This is practicing empathy. According to ChatGPT, I am practicing empathy by doing that, okay? And a side note, ChatGPT is like my new best friend because, you know, I have a problem with second-guessing myself. Since I always, I get so much hate and flack, I try to make sure I do a double take before I say anything, right? 
And, uh, because I don't want another bad clip to show up, right? And that's what I've been practicing a lot of control, especially with this last run of League of Legends. And then another viewer question. Uh, when you think about the, la the, the last 10 years, Willie, or even just the, the last three years, are you happy with where you've come from and where you are now? I think it would be really hard for me to answer. And so here's the deal, right? Because I love talking about life advice and stuff like that, okay? If I had to describe the last 10 years or three years of my life, it's like watering a bamboo seed. That's basically what my last 10 years has been like. You don't see any of the progress happening at all, okay? Because it's happening underground. It's all under the surface. But then when it's time, the bamboo sapling sprouts and becomes 60 feet tall. That's how my life has felt for the last 10 years. My YouTube channel and my Twitch channel are finally taking off after having been, uh, even when I've been streaming. Again, I made my Twitch account back in July of 2012. My, my first YouTube account was April of 2012. This new channel and stuff has been around for a little bit, okay? Uh, and uh, what's it called? I've been streaming with years, for years! Not that much results. And Cho has seen it, everybody has seen it. My stream has blown up in literally just like the last, like, few months. I broke 200,000 views on YouTube. I have videos that are now breaking 10k views. That's a first. I've made uh, almost a thousand uh, dollars from streaming on Twitch alone. It's not a lot, but hey, it's better than going to zero. But you know, even though not a lot has happened over those 10 years, like on the surface, you know, I've gotten older, I've gotten more mature, I have a better understanding of myself. A lot of YouTubers are quitting. That's the new news. I didn't put that in his notes. Matt Pat apparently is quitting. Captain Sparkles already did his thing. I wonder who's going to be next. Markiplier. Who else? PewDiePie. Who else? I know PewDiePie had a kid. But it's okay. Because you have to understand, just like how everything goes through a phase or through generations and people die out, the next generation's turn is coming up next. And I hope to be a part of that next generation. Now that I had 10 years to prepare myself, right? But I never quit. I never quit streaming. Even though, I, even though I was indefinitely suspended on Twitch, I did other accounts. I streamed on different platforms. And, you know, I've been blowing up ever since. Ever since I got my account back from uh, Twitch. Because, again, I was never banned. I was indefinitely suspended. So there's a difference. If you're permanently banned on Twitch, you are permanently banned until lifted. Okay? I was never banned. I even have the number, the receipts to prove it. Um, but yeah, I didn't quit. Didn't give up. Same with League. I started towards the end of Season 2, and I was really bad at League. But over time, until about Season 9, I hit Diamond three times. Or I hit Diamond three different times. And then this uh, 2023, I made it to Masters twice. I even got a fresh account from Iron 1 0 LP to Diamond 2 47 LP in under a month. With about 200 some games it's not that bad if we look at this account i have literally 211 games played on this account we peaked this account at uh diamond 247 lp okay and i did that in the span of uh we did that in like the span of from December 13th to January 8th. Again, remember, I took like 10 days off because I took like a Christmas vacation. So I didn't even play like the entire time during this period. I played a concentrated effort before I went on vacation and then all the time I spent after I got back on the 29th up until the 8th. So over 11 days, I played like 180 games of League, averaging about 17 to 18 games of League a day, okay? Mm, what else to recap? The last 10 years of my life. Um, yeah, if, you look, if we were to look at my life on a day-to-day -day basis, I didn't really change much. Uh, but if we look at it across 10 years, I definitely improved. I have a six-pack, I work out, I stay in shape, I, I take good care of my physical appearance, I wear a suit on the live stream now, I wear a suit and tie, I take care of my hair... I don't use headphones anymore. I wear earbuds. 
Um, yeah, a lot has changed. I changed my stream background, so it's not that boring for you guys. I have zero dollars in debt. I have a positive net worth. Uh, I may not have a lot of money. Like, I have money, not a lot, but enough. I mean, I'm able to buy an iPhone 15 and Pro Max and cash and then get, you know, two additional phones on top of that. One of which has Cho's name on it. Uh, the hobbies I enjoy, I've gotten better at. I improved. So, League, I definitely got better at. Uh, especially since I'm not bronze anymore from when I first started playing the game. Uh, am I raging as much as I used to from a lot of what I've heard from other people? I think no. I mean, Cho, you know, let me ask you on the spot. Do you think I rage as much as I used to when you first met me? No, I don't think so. Okay. The point is, is that I may not have the ideal situation or perfect scenario. And just because we can never achieve perfection doesn't mean I allow myself to be lazy and not work towards getting better every single day. Because I still have a lot to improve on in terms of League. I still get frustrated at the game, but I think that's healthier than me, like, slamming my desk, slamming my mouse, slamming my keyboard. I think that's a lot healthier. The point is, is that I want to be directionally correct. So, for example, like, when a plane takes off from an airport, it's not automatically facing the direction of the airport that it's flying towards. Sometimes you get off course a little bit and you have to steer back. It's like when you're driving a car on the road. You think you're going to be straight 110% of the time? No, you'll veer a little bit, but then you have to get yourself back in line. That's it. This is such a confusing route. Why does it do this? Oh, and here's Lou. Here's a, somebody that's up. I saw you recommended in YouTube shorts just stopping in to say hi. Is the person's name Neba, but in a different clip, you said it with a G-A and named someone Discord Kitten. Didn't get it. Just new to the channel, so I didn't understand. He says that, but he admitted later that he made a, f a fresh YouTube account to ask a question because he didn't want people to go back to find him on his main YouTube account. Oh, and so I was explaining... And then this lone drone man came and said, whenever people say I have black friends usually means they don't and they are racist. That's why I never like, so to clear things up, right? I have a, a, a person that I hang out with a lot and their nickname is Nibba. That's just the nickname I gave them. That's it. And so here's the deal. What I find more often than not is that it's non uh, black people that get offended over a nickname that I'm giving to a friend that I'm not going to verify whether they are or not. It does not matter. It shouldn't matter anyway. It's just these people that are just trying to be social justice -y and it's just cringy. And so I showed the clip that everybody was talking about because I said, I was going to go eat some nib knob food. I'm going to eat some fried chicken. And everybody thought, I, I don't know, the, the haters thought I was just being racist or whatever. Like, shut up, dude. Like, more likely than not, they don't have any friends that are black. And so it's just like, shut up, dude. You just want somebody to complain about me being racist when you literally don't have anybody that, like... Bro, it's like somebody coming up to me and saying, like, I want to eat some egg roll! You have some good food? Like, I don't care. That's funny, dude. You never seen a comedy skit before? Like, that's what that tells me. Like, you're out here telling me that I'm being racist. Like, bro, you've never seen a YouTube video before? You've never been to Call of Duty Lobby? Like, shut up, man. And here brings us into the topic. Um, racism. On that topic, I believe in free speech, meaning anything should be allowed to be said. That doesn't mean you're safe from the social ramifications or consequences. There's a difference between avoiding uh, people avoiding you because you said something racist and people wishing death uh, or threatening you or exercising physical violence or doing emotional physical harassment, the latter is not what I support and am vehemently against, okay? I think people are allowed to have different opinions. That's how our world is and what it is today, right? But because people went against the social norms, right? I don't think people should control what other people are allowed to say. Like, the world that we live in today is because people went against the social norms. Like, Copernicus said that the world is not revolving around the earth the earth is again the heliocentric theory the earth revolves around the sun 
he got killed for it. Galileo is busy trying to prove to us about the stars. But he's alive because he decided to, like, you know, uh, honor the people that supported his work by giving them credit, right? Oh, man. Yeah, just a lot of conversation about the N-word stuff. Oh, yeah, and safe space, right? Oh, God. So, when people... Wait, who said safe space again? Let me see. Oh. Uh, I can't remember. All right, here we go. Last question. Even after these hardships or past behavior, why did you still say the N word with the with a or say stereotype jokes? Don't you think this might get you trolled more again? But wouldn't you be upset if someone made Cambodian jokes? And I explained it pretty simply. Like, dude, I like it does not matter. Like, dude, if you. If I were to say a word, right, that is considered or deemed offensive to a dog, a cat, a rabbit, a monkey, they don't care. It's just the word. If an alien came from outer space and showed up on Earth and I told him he's an N-word with the hard R, you think you'd understand? So you have to understand, like, again... Like, we only get upset at things that we allow to make us upset. So, the question being, wouldn't you be upset if someone made Cambodian jokes? No, because I don't allow myself to get upset over a Cambodian joke. Because that's not a reflection of the person making the joke. That's a reflection of me if I get offended. Uh, is there anything else here that's important? Okay. I think that's it. Yep. All right, we spent about 32 minutes, or, yep, 32 minutes talking about haters and whatnot. I'm going to end this video here, and then we're going to talk about the next topic. Uh, but, yeah, if there's anything you guys want to talk about, I mean, feel free to hop on the stream. We stream 24-7. Uh, as long as you see me, like, visibly awake and not passed out in my chair or decked because, uh, you know, Cho sent his ghost and, you know, knocked me out so I can actually sleep. Punch me behind the head. Uh, I'm here for you guys. So, peace, peace. I'll see you guys in the next piece of content that I make. Bye-bye. That was actually good timing with that music ending. That's that song just ending just then. That was pretty good. Okay. Are we back at a thousand subscribers yet? Uh, we went back to a thousand. I like how I went down and went back up. What the hell? Yo, somebody gave me a positive comment. Yo, good content. Keep it up. Thank you. Oh, apparently I played against a famous streamer the other day. Good. Yeah. Wings of Death. He's a he's a former pro for TSM. No. Oh. He has like 200,000 subs and or no, uh what's it called? Just a lot of people, whatever. Okay. And so I played against him in one. Very interesting. I don't know, I wouldn't have known that the guy was famous until, like, if nobody told me. Oh, I saw this video a long time ago. Monty Python communist quiz sketch. <laughs> Let's see, where is... How is it this one? No, sorry, I didn't.